be speaking about true and relative motion of heavenly bodies. Earlier in one of my sessions I told you that solar system is a very small and tiny part of the space. The size of space is something which we cannot imagine. We may appear fixed with respect to the stars in vicinity that is the stars of Milky Way and Milky Way is just one of the galaxies and in the space there are many galaxies and these galaxies are actually moving in the space. That's why they have sometimes termed it as ever expanding universe. Now talking about the real and apparent motion. Let us for the timing understand that all the stars which we see are fixed. Okay. So when somebody talks about real and relative motion, only two things come to our mind. One is the relative motion due to spinning of the earth and another one is relative motion due to revolving of the earth around the sun. So to understand the true and relative motion of heavenly bodies, let us first understand the relative motion which is caused because of the spin of the earth. Now in the concept of celestial sphere drawn in the plane of observer's rational horizon, we had drawn a diagram like this showing the direction west to east and suppose we talk about 40 degrees north where the distance from here to here is 40 degrees and so is the distance from this point to this point, north celestial pole and the distance is equal to latitude. All the heavenly bodies they appear to rise in east, set in west, rise in east, set in west. This is because of the spin of the earth, this is because of the rotation of the earth. All the heavenly bodies they appear to rise in east, set in west. Now this rising and setting is not there in case of the heavenly bodies when the sum of the latitude of the place and declination of the body becomes more than 90. In fact, when they have the same name and the sum is more than 90, the body becomes circumpolar, the body will never set. And if the names are different and the total is more than 90, the body will never rise. We had drawn the circumpolar body like this. Suppose we are talking about 50 degrees north latitude, the pole comes here. All the heavenly bodies whose polar distance is less than 50 degrees would appear circumpolar. I often ask my students if they have seen the inferior meridian, I see a question mark on their face. Astronomy is a subject to enjoy actually. In the northern hemisphere, for example, you take a clear night and you look in the north direction. Suppose the latitude of your place is 35 degrees north. Then you look in the north direction, approximately 35 degrees above the horizon, you will find a tiny star which is also found with the help of Great Bear constellation where star Jube is actually pointing towards the pole star. Now this pole star, suppose in 35 degrees north latitude, it is 35 degrees above the horizon. If you draw a line vertically below the pole star till the horizon, that is your inferior meridian. And a line drawn vertically above from here it may go up to the zenith and on the other side of zenith also that is your observer's celestial meridian. So now with the pole star and this distance that is the distance equivalent to latitude if that radius you draw a circle and suppose n number of stars they fit in this circle then all the stars which are found in the circle are circumpolar for that observer for that latitude. These stars they will never set in that particular latitude. You can always see them. You can see them in early morning. You can see them in the night. Their positions will be different and that change of position is called relative motion. So we have seen the relative motion of the heavenly bodies which rise and set. Relative motion of the heavenly bodies which are circumpolar. Now, uh, let us see what happens because of the revolution of Earth around the Sun. For that, let us look at the Sun from north of the solar system. Suppose this is the orbit of Earth. Now, I assume that as you see the Sun, you are also able to see the background stars and you will find that the Sun is in this constellation. After about one month, when the Earth comes here, you find the Sun has shifted to another constellation and then when the earth comes here you will find that the sun is in 
the third constellation. Likewise, they say that sun changes its house 12 times in a year and sun is in different houses. You are not able to see the sun with the stars. So you are not able to find out whether the sun is changing the constellation. But if you could see the sun and star together and if you could video show the sun along with the star through the year for 365.25 days, if you run that video in fast forward, you will find that the sun moving from one house to other house approximately at the rate of 30 degrees per month changing from one constellation to other constellation. The path traced in the sky, the sun going from one corner to other corner. Sun completing a 360 degrees path in one year. Sun describing a great circle in celestial sphere in the sky. That great circle is called ecliptic. Actually what is happening is the earth is going around the sun. So real motion is earth going around the sun. And the apparent motion is sun moving eastward in the sky. As you see from top, sun going anti-clockwise. Now, the same motion we can see in another diagram, whereby this is the celestial sphere, this is the equinoctial, and this is the ecliptic, and sun going from one side to other side, completing the journey in one year. This is the first point of Aries, this is Libra, right? So, as Earth goes once in her orbit, the sun goes along the great circle and completes a journey of 360 degrees in one year. So we should be able to relate these two diagrams whereby this is the real motion of the earth and this is the apparent journey of sun in the ecliptic. I will show you one more diagram. Having understood these things, I will show you one more diagram. This is the north polar diagram. In the north polar diagram because of the spin of the earth you will find that the sun is going clockwise or westward at the rate of 15 degrees per hour. Aries also going westward at 15.041 degrees per hour. And the planet going at 15 degrees plus V. And moon going westward at 14 degrees 19 minutes plus V. According to this diagram, Aries is always in the process of overtaking the sun at the rate of 2.46 minutes per hour. That means, once the Aries overtakes the Sun, how much time it will take to overtake the Sun for the second time? That means, once the Aries meets the Sun, in how much time the Aries will meet the Sun again? Because once the Aries has overtaken the Sun, Aries has to overtake another 360 degrees. So, it is interesting to note, Aries is overtaking at the rate of point. 041 degrees per hour to overtake another 360 degrees it will take one year so once the aries is here next time when the aries comes back to the sun is also understood here but here i am showing the sun going in the ecliptic sun meeting the aries and then sun going eastward next when the sun comes back here is after one year so now you must relate these three diagrams. They actually talk about the same thing. You must relate this diagram to this and you must relate this diagram to this and that is how we understand the true and relative motion of heavenly bodies. Now in the study of true and relative motion of heavenly bodies we should also remember we talked about direct and retrograde motion of planets. Also in the study of true and relative motion of heavenly bodies it needs to be talked about the precision of equinox and regression of nodal points. Now what happens because of precision of equinox? Precision of equinox is a process whereby the equinoctial points, they regress westward at about 50 seconds per year. To regress through 360 degrees, it takes about 25,800 years. Because of precision of equinox, so-called fixed stars, they appear to move in SHAN declination. Now there is regression of nodal points of moon's orbit. There is this ascending node and descending node. Ascending node is the point at which the moon's orbit crosses the ecliptic upwards and descending node, it crosses the ecliptic downwards. They regress westward at the rate of 19.3 degrees, which means a complete cycle of 360 degrees would take 18.6 years. Now what happens because of this? 
Because of this, continuously every lunar month, the maximum declination limit of moon changes. It is not fixed like the sun's declination limit, which is about 23 and a half degrees north south. Now here once again, if we see the real motion is westward regression of the nodal points and the effect which is felt is the change of maximum declination of moon every lunar month. So I hope you have enjoyed the session on true and relative motion of heavenly bodies.